not too shabby, Commander. I think PD likes you. Alright guys, today I'm here to talk to you all about the newest mount that was added to Guild Wars just with the most recent patch. This is mount number 6. Mounts of course being a headlining feature of the most recent expansion and fairly new territory for the game. Uh, this is the Roller Beetle. Now back at the release of the expansion that added these... Uh, I did spotlights on the other mounts, but this one's going to be a little bit different because this is such a complicated and intriguing, interesting uh, little thing. Uh, the first profound thing about it is that this has come with a living world release instead of at the launch of an expansion itself. So this was a regular free update as people just log into the game right now, uh, which I don't think many of us expected them to add more mounts with that after the first few live big updates didn't include mounts. The fact that one has come with open world really blast the gates open in my opinion for the kind of stuff we could find in these patches I think there's gonna be a lot of people who haven't looked at Guild Wars since Path of Fire the expansion itself came out they're gonna come back to the game later and be like oh god there's a ton of different mounts and quite long processes to acquire them with the regular updates so for that reason we're gonna be talking a little bit more about it so uh, yeah let's jump in first of all with how he looks how he feels some first impressions So first of all, uh, a roller beetle is something you should recognize from Guild Wars 1, and it looks like this. In Guild Wars 2, this is. And it's a pretty goddamn faithful recreation of those little guys uh, back in the original game. Very quick backstory is that you could ride around inside these beetles for a kind of racing mini game that would only appear for brief windows of time throughout the year in the original. Well over 10 years ago was when roller beetle racing was last seen in this franchise. And now with this patch, uh, it's come into the sequel. It basically feels just like a Guild Wars 1 roller beetle, but with this really fancy cool Guild Guild Wars 2 treatment where they have really special movement and they've got lots of character baked into them. One of the uh, things you just saw immediately right there was uh, one of the idle animations. Uh, of course, one of the big ones that was quite a hit with the internet back at the release of Path of Fire was the Raptor and it had kind of that very special uh, idol. Well, the Roller Beetles got their own as well and... Um, One's a little dance, the other one is on occasion, uh, we will pat him and we'll like give him a thumbs up and he'll like nod uh, in appreciation of the thumbs up. Uh, the carrot, the beetle itself has got quite a lot of character I would say too, just because of its acquisition process. Down at the bottom if you look at the user interface, uh, they've really done something quite cool with the skill bar and really changed a lot of the art that goes on down here This does happen with other mounts, but this is the first mount that I really noticed is quite special The scene we're at right now this starter map is quite blue So you can't tell perfectly, but uh, it does look kind of beetly and there's nice little tendrils and things down there Which is kind of nice. You also obviously get the UI update so that it slots in here You'll notice that the griffin still appears at the top of the mount list now The reason I think that the devs did this is because the griffin is still kind of a big prestige mount. It costs a lot of money to the get, get the griffin. It's hidden behind uh, a lot of story and, well, hidden. I mean, nowadays everybody knows where it is because of guides. But I think that the griffin still sits as something special and extra, while the roller beetle is not quite so crazy. It doesn't have this massive gold cost on it at all. It's just a couple of things that you collect and uh, play the game, which we'll get into in just a second. So he sits here on the UI. Uh, you get this little image when finally you acquire him, which is quite nice. Generally, it has has the full treatment of a Guild Wars 2 mount. It's a special thing that really radically changes the way you move around the world. It's not just some pretty skin, but nonetheless feels like a raptor, say. It's, uh, it's a very different beast altogether. So, uh, let's run through collection. Now, basically what happens is you get these collections that you have to complete. This is not Golden Path for this update. So what do I mean that by that? I mean you don't get the beetle automatically from completing the story. And what that also means is many years down the line, when people see their friends with beetles, because they've come into the third expansion or fourth or whatever, and they're like, I want to get that, you can come back to this patch, and you won't be expected to know everything that's going on in the story or whatever, because it's not a big part of the experience. It is a side 
thing. And that really does dictate a lot of the design of the beetle, such as the fact that this beetle allows you to smash through walls. We'll talk about that later. But because the beetle is a side objective in this patch and is probably only going to be available in this patch, that means the amount of places we can break through walls and how much the devs really ask you to have a beetle is very limited because it's so easy in the broader scope of Guild Wars 2 to miss this thing. Obviously, contemporary players will all be uh, running around grabbing it and that's what everyone's focused on right now. But in several months' time, that's not going to be so. I think that adds kind of a special twist to this mount, by the way, in that you will have somewhat a sense of identity enough years down the line when you have a beetle while your friend has something else because they were playing during a different living world season than you and, and whatnot. And that's not to say anyone's ever going to be locked off from it, but I just think it'll be that nice special little bit of flavor you will get there. The, the Path of Fire launch mounts, you don't have so much. So, yes, it's collections on the side of the main story. And uh, collections might not be for everyone, but I really think that what the devs are doing are quite smart here. They are three separate con collections that kind of tell a story about how you acquire the mount. So this is no major story spoilers, but basically a beetle is grown in uh, accordance with one of the main characters. Good, good, you're here. I just confirmed a suspicion I've had. Oh, this is big. Very big. How big? Well, you see, Petey, my beetle, the one living under my skin that I was Correct. talking to. The commander knows who Petey is. And uh, you help to feed it with the first collection. You'll notice that this feels a lot like the legendary weapon collection hunts that they were playing with around Heart of Thorns. The first one is themed all around gathering things like tonics and juices uh, to roid up the beetle, essentially, uh, with a surin science and make it much bigger than it naturally should be. For this, what you're going to be asked to do is travel around the new map, the domain of corner that came with this patch. And hidden in the ground are these caches with the various tonics. It's really simple. It's not that interesting. Um, and it is a little bit needle in a haystacky, but you do get that blue light you can see from distance, just as they did with the previous expansion, Heart of Thorns and other places. So you can see these drops from quite far away. Uh, obviously, it's an MMO, and you'll get the best experience playing with other people. I did this with one other person, and between the two of us scouting the map, we did this in less than half an hour, maybe even not even 20 minutes. Uh, there was like one that we got a little bit stuck with. Uh, but yeah, so that's the first collection. Just explore the map, find some new places, uh, and have fun with that. Uh, once you've injected the beetle and it's full grown, you'll next you need to create a saddle for it. Uh, and so if we actually get on the mountain here, again, if you look very carefully at the design... Whereas in the first game we were inside the beetle, now we are on this awesome harness, this rigging off the back that floats. There is actually story to where this comes from. We build this as a part of the collections and, you know, that's Guild Wars' way to be able to tell that little bit of story there and get that extra uh, understanding in. So this is obviously lots of weird, interesting machinery and the second collection is about doing stuff like that. But it's not just the new map, the Domain of Corner. This is where I think that the devs were really clever. There are some objectives, I think three, that take you back to Core Tyria. And uh, so that includes killing a world boss, that includes doing one of the new current events that they've got added, the Leyline Anomalies, and one of the other ones is to take out some steam creatures in Lornar's Pass. Uh, for their technology. Uh, now, some people have been a little bit miserish about this and said, oh, we shouldn't have to wait for time-gated events. Uh, but I really think it's very smart on the part of the devs to do it because this is such a headline feature of this patch. Guild Wars is in kind of a funny place right now where people are very much fair weather players. They come in, they zerg through the patch, they'll try to get this mount as quickly as possible and then vanish very, very fast. And they spend very little time outside of just the most recent update. By having such a cool feature, encourage people to go and explore other areas of the game they might not have looked at for several years in a row. They've got a chance to really up their attention. People might be like, oh yeah, I remember world bosses. I remember fighting the Mark II Golem. This is awesome. Maybe I'll do some more. They'll remember that stuff. They'll get encouraged to join squads. Their chance of finding new guildies and whatever goes up. So I do think it's actually quite smart. It also, in the case of the Leyline Anomaly, shows them content they might not even know exists. People who very thoroughly watch the game and follow it, such as my channel, might uh, be clued in on what the Leyline Anomaly is. But I bet a lot of these Fairweather players aren't and if anything from chat has been to go by as I've been participating to get my own harness uh, yeah there's a lot of new people around and this is good for getting people flashing them around the rest of the world 
I think that there's another thing that says too, which is that the ley line anomalies will probably never be removed. There'll always be a good reason to do the Mark II Golem. If you look at the size of the Zergs that are in these places, like, look at this stuff, guys. It feels really alive and awesome and thriving when the get devs get us to go do stuff like this. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it, uh, even though the timing was pretty bad for me. Honestly, this video I'm doing quite late. Uh, and one of the reasons was I missed a couple of windows to get these bosses and that never feels good because then you have to wait quite a while to get the next one. They even, to top this whole retention thing off, did something else really smart. There's a new achievement at the same time encouraging you to go around and kill all the old world bosses. So you do the Mark II Golem for your mount and then you remember, oh, there's all this other stuff like ore. And I think that the devs are really honing in on that to get people to spread around the game and you, you to utilize the whole product, the whole game, instead of just the very most recent thing to have come in. Obviously, we've got a beetle now. I'm here in the first map of the game. But with a beetle, uh, you know, our exploration of a place like this might feel a little bit different, as you will see in just a second. Third and finally, you have a collection to make the beetle actually like you because you can't ride it otherwise. And uh, so this, again, is very simple tasks littered throughout both the new map, the domain of corner, killing certain enemies, going to certain areas, interacting with equipment, and also going back to core tier areas. In particular, one of the places that they get, get you to go back to is the Far Silver Waste, which was a really nice touch considering it's a beetle and that there was a beetle related event up there and that was where we first started hearing about the new hawk and whatnot way back a uh, long time ago. Uh, so you get to go to all these old places with your new mounts and just kind of have your fun there. The hardest thing with the third collection is it does ask for some of the new patches map currency, which if you've been going on spending sprees up until this point, you're going to feel a bit slapped in the face because you're like, oh, now I need a ton for this. Luckily, I had saved it all, and so it was hardly a blip on the road for me. I had all of this done in less than two hours, honestly. Uh, so that is acquiring it. Now you get the beetle and you can hang around with it. You can play. And we can talk a little bit about uh, controls and how to pull off the cool stuff that you've been watching in the background. The community's really taken to this, I think. Uh, some people think it's quite clunky, but there are all kinds of racing guilds and people creating courses all around the world, which is fantastic. And it's just because of how fast this thing moves and how fun it feels to use. So, uh, let's take it slowly. First of all, you have walking. If you walk, you will just hover around behind the beetle as the beetle walks around very slowly. This might even just be regular movement speed walking. And we're on a giant goddamn mount, so it feels tiny. All right, this is about as much as you'll get with the walking. Uh, and it is nice. The reason I show this off is because the actual in-movement animation is totally different as the beetle obviously will be rolling around. So let's talk about going at speed. We've got a slight decline down this slope now. I've started this video in a very precise area. We're no longer going to walk and we're just going to roll. All I'm doing is pressing W right now, and because I'm going downhill, this is what's special about this mount, it keeps speeding me up, and as long as there's a decline, and speeding me up, and speeding me up, and speeding me up, and behind my saddle, you'll see that there's this line of energy. The longer that line grows, the, the maybe the color shifts slightly, it will show you just how much speed you've gained, and all of a sudden, we are rocketing around what is one of the starter maps, and you guys will know, that's it's like takes a while to get down this road, even on your other mounts, even on the Raptor, the Jackal. This is fast. It's moving us way quicker than you can expect the others. But it is based, now as we start moving uphill, uh, we start slowing down, it is based on the, G the, the terrain that you're traveling across and these slopes. If I try to keep going, even as I'm moving slowly here now, you'll notice we slow and slow and slow and we're barely at a walking pace now. If I keep trying to brute force it, we really do end up slowing to a crawl. I've managed to worm my way through this a little bit better here and now I'm stuck between this post. Uh, but if you keep trying to just go uphill with your regular WS and D on this thing, you will eventually find it's pointless. You would be better being on a Raptor. You would be better being on a Jackal. Because that's the thing, obviously, guys. In Guild Wars, they really aren't interested in power creeping one option over all others when it comes to the mounts. Uh, the point is that depending on the situation you find yourself in, you're going to look at each of these now six companions you have and think that one is best. You know, the skimmer is going to be great over water and for just ease of access. The jackal is going to be great probably on slopes. Uh, the raptor is good on flat terrain. And now we've got the beetle to the mix, so they've got to find a good balance there. And this is how they've done it. It's with the hills and the slopes. Obviously, if you get super high and you have the griffin, you can griffin around too. 
And I think the, the road of beetles is an okay middle ground. Uh, so that is just walking. Let's go back to our position. And I want to show you another very fun component of the beetle. And that's that as you move faster, difficult terrain becomes less of an obstacle to you. All right, much like riding a bike in real life, as any of you watching this will know, the faster you move, the easier it is to stay balanced. It's kind of true of the roller beetle here. So small things like inclinations and bumps and rocks, like the one we're currently perched on, might be a bit annoying when we're moving very slow. But as we go faster, you'll find you can kind of just bounce around over most small issues. So like this wall here... I might have to jump a little, but we could just kind of roll over. And this uh, is really cool when it comes to water, just to show how cool this is. Normally, if you're moving very slow on a beetle, you will fall in the water and you will leave the beetle. But if we are going at pace, this is deep water here that we're going to be going over. If we go at pace over the deep water, you'll see we actually just skip across the surface like a, a skimming stone until finally we slow down. Now, that might not have looked like it lasted very long there, but I'll show you if we come up this hill here, and it's amazing, hopefully you're seeing already how these vanilla maps that were made back in 2010 uh, suddenly feel really fresh and like all these ramps and things were just made for the beetle, even though they obviously weren't. So if I show you from a real incline now, maybe even boost down, uh, we won't be able to boost just yet. But if I show you, you can see we can actually skip quite a bit across. Now, the faster you go, the better. And obviously, it depends on the angle that you're at. But that's kind of the way that the beetle moves. It's got all of that just baked into traveling around with it. Uh, that makes it really fun. Um, now, don't be deceived. It is not always perfect. Uh, for example, right now, if I get on the beetle straight away and then try and take a ramp up, you'll notice that this, this is perfect. This other player there that just ran past me on a jackal, uh, on a raptor, they zoomed past us in the middle of their uh, movement ability and they were like way ahead. The beetle doesn't get its movement abilities very quickly. And I think that's going to be the next big topic that we should talk about here uh, in terms of the controls and the different things we can do. Uh, in fact, let's, let's talk about our skill because this is pretty basic. It's called rollout. This is our engagement skill. As you guys know, in Guild Wars, every mount, you can press the skill one. It will take you off the mount but have some kind of special effect at the same time that does something to your enemies. So this is rollout. Roll forward, damaging foes that you pass through. Uh, so I'll show you what this looks like near these mower. Boom, we charge through them, we do substantial damage, we knock them all down, and now they run at us. Not only did we do that damage and knock them down, but we actually, as you obviously notice... Oh, they're getting feared away from me, though. That scared of me, because I did all that damage. Uh, if you actually notice, they ran... Uh, we, we put a big gap between us and the creatures. So this is where it's really different to other mounts. If I just give you an example, the Springer, we use our special action... We do damage, we do CC, but we're still standing next to the creature that we've assaulted. That's universally true for all the other mounts. The uh, Raptor will pull people in. The Springer kind of puts a bit of distance, but is more of a supportive thing. That's true for the Jackal, who leaps down like this and at your feet. Uh, things are a bit different for the Roller Beetles. So uh, I'll show you that again. Uh, we'll come up the hill slightly. We've got, say, that, that River Drake over there. I'm going to activate the skill one when we're on the Drake or just before the Drake. And then I'm going to let go of the keyboard. I'm not touching anything now. And this is the kind of gap that we've created. Now, uh, you might think, oh, is that really that useful? And you'd be right to question that, I think. Personally, I don't really like the engageability for that. Because quite often, if I'm engaging on something, I kind of want to kill it afterwards. And I find myself really far away. Now, on a Mesmer, I can teleport back or whatever. But uh, that it is a little bit fiddly. It is a bit annoying. Now, interestingly enough, if you do this from a sedentary position, if you have no momentum... So here we got a scale walking up to us, and we just let uh, us use our skill one from standing. You notice we hardly move at all, and it does kind of become a little bit more of an appropriate engage. The problem is, though, as you see that guy rocket past, going from those kinds of speeds to standing still is, like, very, very difficult, if not impossible. I, I'm not a perfect rider just yet. Uh, God, look at everybody rocketing past. This is so cool. Maybe they're having a race. I don't know. This is what Guild Wars looks like as of this patch. Just people charging around on these ridiculous beetles. Um, so, yes, uh, that's the engage skill. There is a mastery, which we'll talk about very soon. Let's get to something a little bit more fun. Let's talk about the, uh, the uh, movement abilities. So, if you guys remember, Mount in this game don't just have these engages they also have movement capabilities that cost endurance so for a raptor 
So we uh, have a special key bind right now. Uh, the space bar is the default bind, uh, which is still my bind here for the beetle as well. When I press it on a raptor, I will leap. When I press it on a springer, I will jump very high in the air. Well, the beetle's special one is a boost. So here you can see my endurance bar is full and it's fully charged. I'm going to roll forward just a little bit and now I'm going to execute the boost ability. And there you can see, even though we weren't really at a decline, we have massive speed now. You can see that the light behind me is red. And now you'll see that we're really rocketing around. Uh, the endurance comes back up and I can boost again. And now we even start getting air as we go over the hills and whatnot. So uh, that's the boost. It is extremely uh, nuanced. There's a lot going on with it, more than meets the eye. The first thing that you might think is, oh, okay, so there's a boost. So if I'm, say, standing here and I want to use the, uh, and I want to get over there, surely the beetle is the fastest and best mount because what I can do is get on the beetle and then just boost up. I don't need to use the Jackal. I don't need to use the Raptor. Beetle trumps everything. But you'll notice, unlike the other mounts, when I first get on my Beetle, my Endurance starts empty. That is not true for all the mounts. It is for this, which means I cannot boost at the start. If I dismount and remount, it goes away. So you are forced. If, if you are just getting on your mount, it is not best to use a beetle in a situation like this because you have to wait all this time. You cannot press the, the, the ability until it fully charges. You can't drain it when it's already halfway. You have to wait the whole thing and then you get the boost. And now maybe you can, uh, you know, bypass some of these hills or whatever. So if you have proper planning, you can really figure out what you want to do on these maps. Um, but you'd have to know them like the back of your hand, let me tell you. Which is why I think that this race course fever is kind of catching. Oh, we can't get through there. That's interesting. We're slightly too big, which is why this fever is kind of catching people. So there is a very cool little bit of quality of life on here. And that's as we roll around, if you watch, when my endurance fills, it, I'll flash. The actual beetle itself will flash, showing it's ready to go. You see that there? And we get a nice little sound effect that maybe you guys can hear. And now we uh, can push forward. So you see that little flash. And that means that you can actually roll a beetle ride with the UI completely off. You'll always know when your boost is back because of the flash. Obviously, you've got to be watching closely for it. But, uh, and hopefully I can demonstrate this properly. So there, it's there. See? And now we can go and we can uh, storm around these maps like it's nobody's business. Uh, also, the boost, as you'll notice, as long as you're still going down here once the boost is over, that line will stay red and you will still be at those peak speeds. Uh, some of you have been wondering at this point whether the peak speeds compare, how they compare to the Griffin. To me, it feels faster. I think it's at least the same speed. But the, the thing we have, so here, this is skimming over deep water, which you can see is easier when you uh, have some more speed on you. Um, the thing is, I might be wrong about it being faster. I haven't done any extensive tests. Obviously, the patch is only a day-ish old as I make this video. Uh, I think, though, it's just that everything might feel faster when you're at ground level. <laughs> Obviously, we rocket through the air on these great birds, but it, when you're high up, you don't quite get the appreciation for, like, rocks and bushes and plants and trees and things whizzing past your ears the same as you do on uh, something like this. So, uh, maybe people in the comments can come down a little bit better with that. So, there you go. That's the boost. I'm not sure I really have too much else to say, except that the uh, cost for this acceleration is also maneuverability. Uh, you should have had a feel for it. I'm taking these kind of very wide turns. Uh, we are not that maneuverable whatsoever on the beetle and while boosting I can hardly turn at all So there's a lot of finesse to this already just from the ways that the terrain affects your speed and uh, How you spend uh, your ability to turn versus uh, going even quicker with the boost? Uh, there's a lot to get to grips with but that gets even more complicated now because guess what just like the griffin There is a there is a movement ability too also so, this is uh, known as drifting, and the game does try to teach you a little bit about that with this adventure, the second that you get to the beetle. If you guys haven't played it, I thoroughly recommend it. Check this out. Take good care of Petey, Commander, and hold on to your head yet. Roller beetles accelerate at an astonishing pace. Where Roller beetles accelerate super quick. I meant to tell you, Commander, when Petey accelerates, his inertia expands his turning radius. Oh, and you should be able to slide into turns and accelerate out. I believe the kids call it drifting. So exciting. 
So yeah, that's actually an adventure where you get dialogue as you play through, and it's fantastic. It works so well as a format, and I, I want to see the devs do more of that as uh, the game goes along. Uh, but basically, what happens here is you press a button, and what this does is allows you to drift. So if while holding your button down, you are also turning, and it happens to be after a booster where you've got a ton of momentum, you can do stuff like this. All right, so here we go. So we're going fast. I'm holding the button and now I'm going to turn and we can drift like that and at the end of the drift if you can count the timing just right you'll notice I basically made a right angle turn there so we'll try another one we're boosting we're at red speed I'm going to drift to the left and there we can kind of maintain our acceleration there we went even inwards slightly um, closer to a u-turn there and so with it and you could do that in obviously either direction with this, the, the possibilities of the beetle are kind of endless. The thing is, you need traction on the ground to be able to do it. There you saw I was trying to drift slightly over the edge, but if you lose that, it won't be able to turn. It honestly really takes a lot of work. I mean, the griffin took me a bit to get used to, and they had all these fantastic adventures available and races available to uh, sort of train me to get better at it. I really think that the beetle is every bit as much of a skill cap mount, if you will, as that was, because it's just so fantastic how this drifting now affects what we can do. So uh, if we want to do a very sudden left to get across that river because it's like the rave course we'd, we'd have to like try and figure out a way to do it uh, and maybe that's uh, something of a demonstration i will note that the default bind for me i think for movement ability two was the c key i think uh which is terrible for this because so there you go that's a u-turn but we we sacrifice all our speed and that's what i was talking about before with the drifting you can sacrifice your speed oh we messed that up uh and then you can use this to engage on a mob uh, in place or something like that could be a way that you do things but the way you could chain this stuff together I guess uh, I might not be creative enough for okay, so um Yes, the default binding, it was a little bit fiddly. I had to rebind it, but now I feel like it's uh, going quite well. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the devs can actually add lots of new races and things that make use of the beetle. Uh, but we'll get into a little bit more discussion about that in a second. Uh, let's change it up ever so slightly. I do want to talk about uh, visual stuff and customization for a second. So in Guild Wars 1, you could customize your beetles. Uh, you could change their colors, but you could also put a pattern on their back. There's no way to do that in game right now. I have no doubt that the gem store will eventually sell skins for this thing, but they don't exist at the time of me making this video. Probably, if you're watching this even a fortnight after I've made it, they will have come out with some kind of Roller Beetle skin. They'll probably make that le uh, like a legendary one like they've done with the others, and they'll sell it individually as like the first Beetle one. Um, but the fact that this just comes from this one living world patch makes me wonder how many skins we'll really get and what they'll go with. Obviously, some people have been hoping for uh, really quite major things like the charred dune buggies would work well. Uh, it remains to be seen what the devs do. We can at least die. So that was kind of a Guild Wars 1 thing too. And obviously, this is Guild Wars 2 where we all have about a million dies. So uh, yes, there are just about any combination. If you've got the die, you can make yourself look it. Uh, so most people in these videos are interested in permafrost, which is the most white of white you can get. Uh, so that's a permafrost one. And Shadow Abyss here is one of the darkest of darks you can get, which is there. And every color under the sun. I see probably more pink and yellow ones than I like to admit. But I'm okay with pink beetles. I don't know. Something about the whole race car thing makes me feel like it's perfectly fine and normal. But there you go. So uh, that's basically how it dies. This obviously just has the one channel. But when skins come, I'm sure we'll get different channels. You'll probably be able to dye the mandibles, probably the back and all that other stuff. Uh, the saddle, I mean, specifically. Oh, I'll also notice at this point that the bobblehead, as ever, is very fun to check out when a new mount comes in the game. I think on my original videos, I did show you guys a bit of this. So we can go into big head mode here. This is how I look with big heads. If you remember the uh, famous big head raptor um, from days gone by. Well, here is the big head roller beetle. And he looks pretty good, I gotta say. While we're rolling around, it looks a little bit more of a bumpy ride. But uh, always a good laugh and something to check out when those skins do come in, probably. All right. Okay. So the masteries, the system whereby we can take our mounts and upgrade them 
Uh, so the first four mounts all kind of had a special thing going on where they had three upgrades and then the last one was like a special shared ability that went through the whole roster. You had the hidden griffin mount at release, which didn't have that. And so I've been wondering if and when the devs add new mounts, like the roller beetle just has been, will we see that slot number four field? The answer is no, we won't. And we're going to be attacked by a harpy while we try to talk about this. So no, there is not anything that the beetle gives us that retroactively upgrades the raptor, the springer, and all that other stuff. I am disappointed by that, but I've made my feelings on that kind of stuff uh, pretty clear in the past. To get all three masteries, it took me about an hour and 15 minutes. So uh, this is coming from someone who's played the expansion fairly exhaustively and all the Living World releases. So I already had all the points. I've still got 13 left over. This really isn't even a mechanic to a player like me. I don't think about mastery points ever. I just grab them when they're around and I'm always in excess. The hour and four, uh, the hour and 15 minutes, maybe it was an hour and a half. And the way I did this was, uh, to tell you the truth, I was a little bit rushed getting the experience here because I wanted to make this video, which, as I've already explained, is a little bit late. So I used boosters. I don't normally use boosters, so you can take my uh, opinion with a grain of salt if you like. I think most players in the game have got some at this point. But I popped boosters. I went to the Sandswept Isles. That was episode two. And I just wandered around killing Moa and stuff. I also, while, while I was at it, earned about 50,000 karma. Just walking around, killing random mobs that hadn't been killed for a while. As you can see in the footage in the background, it was as simple as that. I did it on my warrior. You, I'm not saying that that's the best technique. You guys could easily do the same. And uh, yeah, it was done. It was really not an engaging, interesting aspect of RPG uh, progression. It was uh, just kind of a task to be done, to be honest. But here are the three perks we get from it. Number one is Wrecking Ball. Now, Wrecking Ball describes itself like this. It says, roll out damages foes as you roll over them and launches them a short distance. So, we're talking about the engage ability, okay? So, it says it's added damage and launched. The funny thing is, this ability, rollout, was damaging anyway. So, I guess the mastery just upped the damage a bit. Uh, which one of our other mounts upped the damage on that a bit as well, I think. Uh, and then it says it knocks them a short distance. Well, as you can see from the tooltip there, it launches targets zero. And I, I can't figure it out. It doesn't seem to matter how fast I go. So, here, we're going to wreck and ball through this whole group here. Ready? Boom. And that's pretty goddamn cool. You'd expect that they all go flying through the air with us now, right? You'd expect like a high target cap. You'd expect... You want to go bowling, right, with that. That's what it seems to all be themed and designed around. That seems to be what it's uh, telegraphing to us, that they go flying, that it's a launch, and maybe that launch scales with your speed would have been the way to do it. But frankly, it does nothing. It just knocks them down in place. It's no better than uh, just the Springer. Adding a launch as the CC components to the new mount made a lot of sense to me because we had the pull from the Raptor, we had the knockdown from the Springer, we, you know, we had various things. So adding a launch on the Beetle, if you're going fast enough, seemed immaculate. And yet that's not what happens. So a little bit disappointed with Wrecking Ball. Next up, we have Barrier Smash. So it describes itself as saying, use your Roller Beetle's boost ability to smash through marked blockades and destroy volatile crystals. All right, so this is something I was really hyped about from the trailers and from the uh, build up to this release. So as you'd expect, you might not be able to knock your enemies far away, but you can blast through walls. Where those walls are though, is exclusively the domain of corner. To this date, the devs have never retroactively added mastery stuff to previous content. So the only place you'll ever find this mastery of any use is on this map here where you can break through a couple of walls. And the animation's fine and fun and interesting. It's a bit weird with the endurance being low in that sometimes you have to get on the beetle, wait, stationary, and then finally charge up and get through, which is a bit strange. Uh, but my main thing with this is there's just not that many walls. There's not like multiple barriers and barricades stacked on top of one another that you ram through a whole selection of. There's just the odd wall every now and then. None of the real uh, map completion or interesting content is gated behind there. Maybe one or two things. But it's not that great. And I have to look at the fact that this once again is a mastery to a single living world release. Now why that's really prominent 
is we could be looking at a very cool idea here, guys. Uh, busting through this stuff that is never touched anywhere else because they don't want to require or ask very heavily at all people of subsequent episodes to come back and get this one in this map. If this ends up like the Coden Torch or the Slingshot from Draconis Mon, some of those other casualties we saw of this system in Living World Season 3, I'll be really upset. It, it doesn't impress me. It's really unfortunate, but it's part and parcel of the mastery system. And let's face it, when has the mastery system actually been impressive? So, yeah, for what it's worth, I have enjoyed it on the map, but I think it's going to be a very short-lived and small aspect of the game. Best I can hope for, maybe they add a guild hall decoration that lets us break through it for community stuff. But that's a very small consolation. There is one other mechanic of this as well, uh, breaking the crystals around the desert. Yeah, it's fun. It gives you a bit of currency, and it definitely makes the beetle more rewarding to run around on in that map than anywhere else. But again, are we going to see those crystals elsewhere? I guess that remains to be seen. And last of all, we have Big Air. So, this one's great, all right? I may have been lukewarm on the other two, but this one is genuinely great. So, it says this. Press and hold the jump button after boosting and catching air to perform stylish, stylish tricks. Tricks remain active and replenish endurance while the jump button is held. An endurance penalty will be administered for improper landings. All right. Now, this is where things get really, really awesome with the beetle. Basically, if you boost and get yourself airtime, you can jump on this little creature. He doesn't jump very well, but he does jump a little bit. If you get a lot of airtime because you've jumped on a great ramp, and you would have thought I would have prepared a little bit better, maybe this will be a good enough ramp here. If you do that, while holding the jump button down, you will trigger various animations that you can see here in the background. While those tricks are going, your endurance regenerates. And this means that if you time your boosts into jumps and do tricks perfectly, you can do a boosted jump straight into another boosted jump, into another boosted jump, and rock it around at incredible speeds, constantly gaining airtime. But you mess up slightly, you hit a ramp at the wrong angle, you don't get the full airtime, you're not going to have the time to do the tricks, you're not going to fill enough endurance, you might mess up and lose endurance. And now if you put this in like a racing setting, you can just see how fantastic this is, as a, just all on its own encapsulated as a brilliant device. If someone creates the, the right course on the right map with the right number of jumps and things, the skill cap required for this stuff goes through the roof uh, and it could get really quite competitive so i'll try and show you here a live action thing so we will uh boost up this we're in the air and i'll do a trick now you'll see that my endurance just from that little bit of air time there already respond uh recharged about 25 percent so we'll do it again here we'll go in the air it's not that one wasn't very good there we never got it at all maybe we can race through here somehow uh, we, we've got to try and find a ramp here. Uh, mm, yeah, this this should this should do if we can get the boost in time. Maybe. No, it's not good enough. So you can see that the struggles here, right? Like, you've got to find the right place. And the thing is, a lot of Guild Wars was never designed for this. So you might question how great that is. There, we're skipping across the water and lo losing a lot of uh, speed. But yeah, so that's the way that the tricks work. I did actually create for you all, uh, just to demo in this video, back at my Guild Hall. Kind of another topic, but obviously guild hall decorations have been getting fantastic lately. They've added various race-related guild hall decorations over the past year. Uh, and Christmas, a little bit back, they added these awesome wedges of snow. Perfect ramps, don't you think? So I just built this. It took me all of about five seconds. It's not very good. It's kind of wonky. Uh, but this is the kind of thing the community can do in guild wars now. I can roll down this. We might not have the endurance here. Uh, that's not, that's not, because remember, when we get on, we don't have the endurance. So we're going to roll up really slowly, uh, and I will show you the tricks. <clears throat> there we go. Right, so we're going to roll down gently here so that we don't totally lose our momentum on the bumpy ride. All right, that went terribly. It's fine. Boost up here. And now I can do tricks all the way down, as you see. And we've fully recharged our endurance. And we land and we can keep going. However, the beetle dies because full damage for your mount is still a thing. Make sure you've got the uh, Springer maxed out if you're just coming to the game. Because that will half the full damage your mount takes. Uh, and yeah, so you can do the tricks. Finding the perfect balance of all of that stuff. And well, you've got one hell of a race course. 
So that's the way that the beetle works. Extremely nuanced uh, mount. Really cool. Does it make it into one of my favorites? I think that actually remains to be seen. The patch is not out long enough just yet for me to come out with some really decisive statement about it. Just because I think in practice, a lot of times I'll be more tempted to go with the raptor or jackal than the beetle. And if the devs don't build good content for the beetle in the way of races as a feature in the new maps, in the way of more breakable walls and stuff, I'm actually a little bit scared about the little guy. Maybe not seeing that much play from me personally. But like I said, there are racing guilds and all kind of stuff. If you really like it, that maybe we'll find a lot of people using. Maybe I'll swallow my words. It definitely does seem to be top speed, at least down on the ground, when you can't go to some massive perch for a griffin. And for that, I think it will have a special place for a lot of people. I'll keep you guys in the loop on how exactly this goes as the weeks and months go by. There's still a hell of a lot to talk about with the patch. So keep an eye out on the channel. I will be doing more videos for those very, very, very soon. Probably talking about, I don't know, the events, the metas, all that kind of stuff. Uh, quite soon. So cheers everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know and everyone else know what you thought about the beetle down below And I'll see you all very soon. Oh, there's the big developer ask me anything as well That's been pushed to Monday. So you might see a video on that quite soon also. Cheers guys. Catch you next time